And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Taborah, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. And our strength is dried up, and there's nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give to all of this people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, just kill me at once. If I found favor in your sight, then I may not see my wretchedness. How long will they have no faith in me? At the heart of the wilderness, God recognizes the core of disillusion, of no faith, mistrust of the world, of God's love, of the births yet to happen. This is the subject of the book of the wilderness of Eva Zornberg. 99 groans tend towards death, while one calls out for life. Rabbi Shapira. We have no reason to mistrust our world, for it is not against us. Has it terrors? They are our terrors. Has it abysses? Those abysses belong to us. Are dangers at hand? We must try to love them. Then that which now still seems to us the most alien will become what we most trust and find most faithful. Rilke, Masa, Merava, Taluna, Hitonenut. The Hebrew words are foreign to us, but we know them all too well in our wilderness experiences. Complaint, scoffing skepticism, quarreling, bewailing. Yes, we know these wilderness rhythms all too well, do we not? One of the great traps in reading numbers is to merely go away thinking, What was the matter with those people? As if somehow we were immune to the same disease. This wasn't an Israelite problem. This is a human condition. No sooner are we tutting our tongues at their stubborn and steady complaining than we will find those same tongues complaining, scoffing, quarreling, and bemoaning our circumstances with our own chorus of, is God with me or not? as our bitter attitude burns us and we blame God for that too. Of course, there's complaining, and then there's complaining. Moses is exasperated with the situation he faces, and he puts into words in an SOS plea for help laden with maternal metaphors. It's as if he's pregnant with a very overdue baby and constantly nursing that chronically unhappy baby at the same time. It reminds me of Lincoln's weary quip when asked by a friend how he was faring as president with a constant long line of favor and help seekers. He said, there's too many pigs for the teats. Moses was heard, and we'll see God moving to help him with his load. Israel complained. The word here is a rare one, actually meaning to mope or droop with sadness. No speech is initially recorded, only the sound of depressed weeping. And God hears and answers with fire, at least on the outskirts of the camp, perhaps where the heart of the complaining rabble among them was located. He will use even stronger methods down the road. Why is there listening and responding with support for the one? punishing fire for the other? 
Perhaps it all comes down to the springs of motivation from which the complaints issue. Yes, there are 99 groans that tend towards death while one calls out for life. One is a poison spring of cynical distrust that can never be fully satisfied, an unassuageable denial, while the other issues from a trust that still clings, what else can it do, but which does not understand. And because it still clings, it puts words to those complaints and questions. The desert is a place where speech is birthed. The question is, what speech is it birthing in us? Do our groans tend towards death? Or do they passionately call out for life in this wilderness we know as life, where we continue to go to grow?